Hello students, it's Dr. Wheeler again. Hope you're having a wonderful day today, learning a lot. I've got another story for you, and this one is by one of my favorite authors, Patricia Polacco. And she is uh, telling a little story about a goose and uh, a, her babushka, her grandmother, who lived in Russia. And it's a made-up story, but uh, she used her grandmother for a lot of her stories. And uh, uh, this is a very interesting story about uh, something we call Pizanki eggs. Uh, Pizanki eggs are well known in the Ukraine, which used to be a part of Russia, and throughout Russia, but other countries in Eastern Europe. They are beautifully painted, hand-painted eggs. And I've got a couple of pictures uh, to show you when we're through with the story. And I, I also got uh, uh, an egg that we found up in Alaska in a Russian uh, shop uh, on the coast of Alaska. So let's get started today with Patricia Polacco's story uh, called Rachinka's Eggs. Rachinka's Eggs. Babushka lived alone in a dhaka, a little house in the country, but she was known far and wide for the fine eggs that she lovingly painted. Her eggs were so beautiful that she always won first prize at the Easter festival in Moskva. Each day, Babushka would take the shell of an egg from her basket and paint it in wonderful designs. Using the shapes of stars and flowers, triangles and circles, through the long, cold winter, Babushka painted. See all the beautiful design that she's putting on these eggs? Then one day, after a snowstorm, Babushka went outside. She could still hear the faint sound of falling snow. It was a sound like soft rain. Herds of caribou came to feed at Babushka's because the grasses they usually ate were covered with snow. But she would bring out food in a... In a large bucket. A miracle, she whispered as she fed some. These wild things have found their way to me. Just then a flock of noisy geese, geese honked loudly overhead. As they glided over the snow, one of them faltered and fell from the sky. Babushka went to where the goose lay crumpled in the snow. Do you see the blood here? A hunter did this, Babushka grumbled. She carefully picked up the goose and took it back to her little house. There she fed the little goose from her own table and put the goose in her best basket, lined with the warmest quilt from her own bed. I shall name you a good name, one that we both can like, eh, my little friend? She said as she patted the goose's head. How do you like Rachinka? Yes, then Rachinka it shall be. With Babushka's care, Rachinka grew stronger as each day passed. To repay her kindness, Rachinka laid an egg for breakfast every morning. As Rachinka got better, she waddled around the little house, exploring every nook, cupboard, and corner. One day, she jumped on top of Babushka's work table, 
overturning the jars of bright colored paint that she used to color the eggs. Yet, Babushka screamed as she chased the goose with a broom. No! The frightened goose flapped her wings to get away and knocked over the basket of eggs that Babushka had so lovingly painted. The eggs crashed onto the floor and shattered into millions of pieces. They were both very sad. There was no reason now for Babushka to go to the festival. The next morning, Babushka slowly got out of bed and trundled over to Rachinka's basket to get her morning egg. But when she reached into the middle of the quilt, she picked out the most brilliantly colored egg that she had ever seen. A miracle, Babushki whispered. A miracle. She made small holes at both ends of the egg and blew the yolk and white into a dish to cook and eat later for breakfast. Then she laid the egg up, then she held the egg up to the morning light and marveled at its beauty. After that, every morning for 12 mornings, there was another egg each more beautiful than the one laid the day before. And soon Babushka had enough eggs to take to the festival in Moscow. How wonderful, she thought. A miracle has replaced the eggs that were broken. Spring is here, my little friend, Babushka said to Rachenka, the morning of the festival. Soon now you will be flying off to the north with your flock. She bustled to the hearth fire and brewed some of her most favorite tea. The two shared a saucer of tea with kulik, a sweet Easter bread. She covered each piece with pushka a spread of cheese, butter, and raisins. They savored each bit together. One for you, one for me, Babushka chanted. Da, da, my little friend, I shall surely miss you, but you are a wild thing, and a miracle sent you to me. It would not be right to ask you to stay here with me forever. When Babushka left, her little house, she took one last look at Rachinka sitting on the doorstep. She waved, then took determined steps from Moscow with the basket of her precious eggs. She crossed Levitov Valley, where the caribou mothers were walking their newborn calves. A miracle, she thought. New little lives, a miracle. She crossed the bridge over the Moscow River and soon she could see the onion domes of old Moscow. The festival was bright and exciting. There were goat carts selling kulik processions, dancers, jugglers, and laughing children playing and running. Babushka showed her old friends the eggs. Her eggs are the most beautiful in all Russia, they thought. Look at them, the elders said. They almost glow as if the paint is part of the shell itself. The judges picked Babushka's eggs as the most beautiful. Babushka was so happy. She beamed as she looked at the first prize, a feather bed quilt. As Babushka made her way homeward, 
A honking flock of geese flew overhead. Babushka gave them a long, lingering look. She wondered if Rachinka was one of them. When Babushka arrived at her home that evening, Rachinka was gone. Alone, she put the new quilt on her little bed. She brewed a cup of tea, ate the last of the kulik and pushka, and got into bed with her favorite book of poems and drifted off to sleep. She hadn't noticed Rachinka's basket. But that night, Babushka was awakened from a sound sleep by an ever so small sound. It was coming from Rachinka's basket. She hobbled closer and saw a glorious egg, but this one was different from all the others. It quivered and moved. It made tiny muffled sounds. The egg jumped, bumped, pulled, and pitched in the basket. Then there was a crack and Babushka could see the very special gift that Rachinka had left for her. Oh, a miracle, Babushka said. And this little goose remained with Babushka always. The end. So, a very beautiful little story about Zanke eggs, Patricia Polacco's babushka, food that they had together, a goose that was injured but was lovingly cared for, and somehow laid painted eggs that restored the ones that the bird had accidentally broken. And then that goose left the most valuable gift to Babushka, someone to live with her, always. Now let me show you a couple of things, a couple of pictures. This is a beautifully painted Babushka's uh, Pazanki egg. Can you see that? Pretty neat, isn't it? Think of all the care that is taken to paint an egg like that. So that's one. Here's another. And then when my wife and I were in Alaska, we did find an egg. This is not a real egg. It's a wooden egg. But this is typical of just how intricate the design can be on these eggs. Isn't that something? Really beautiful. So, you learned a little bit about uh, one of the art forms in Russia uh, and Eastern Europe called Pesanki eggs. And uh, we had a beautiful story about a goose and a, a lovely lady's care for that goose and concern for that goose. Okay, I hope you have a great day. Have fun talking about this story, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.